Hello, welcome to another EV rambling series. Today I'm in a 2017 Hyundai Ionic electric vehicle. This is the pure electric version of this car. Uh, this car comes in three configurations, hybrid, uh, plug-in hybrid electric, and full electric, battery electric vehicle, which is, which is this. So uh, I would first like to start off by thanking uh, Victoria Hyundai. Uh, I kind of reached out to them and they uh, immediately were very responsive to me and offered uh, for me to come and basically take this drive for a vehicle, take photos, do whatever I want with it. And uh, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, my recent, uh, I recently was in Vancouver test driving the Chevrolet Bolt and I love that vehicle. And so this one, this is a different kind of vehicle. First off, it's, it's a sedan shaped vehicle, which is something that the market really needs. It's not another hatch, which we see all over the place. Uh, this car has a 28 kilowatt hour battery uh, which they say is good for about 200 kilometers of driving range. That's going to vary, obviously, but that would need it would need to have some pretty crazy efficiency to get up to that. And you know, looking at the vehicle, I'm, I I kind of imagine it would. It's it's not a very large vehicle. It's a little bit smaller, but still super comfortable. Uh, so I guess the plan is basically we'll turn this vehicle on. I haven't driven it. I've, I quickly turn it on and then off again. Uh, but I'm just going to drive it around Victoria talk about my reactions, what I think, and come up with a review. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's begin this. Foot on the brake, power on. All right, so, uh, obviously display here, you have to wait a few minutes to uh, confirm the drive safely and obey traffic rules. There you go. Uh, we have, if I go into the EV screen here, 59% of battery remaining, which it says are good for about 124 kilometers. The climate is turned off at the moment. I'm kind of boiling here, but I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, I wanna go into electricity use, I think. Yeah, so we can see zero on the drivetrain right now, zero on climate, 0.56 on electronics. Uh, that's constantly adjusting. Uh, so, kind of an interesting thing about this vehicle, oh, that audio's gonna be horrible, is, um, the drive selector, like on the Chevy, uh, like the the Volt, it has like a selector on the Leaf. It has a puck. The uh, the BMW BMW i3 had a control up here. Uh, the um, Chevrolet Bolt had like this kind of puck system. This is just buttons, and so this is kind of pushing that. With an electric vehicle, it could be whatever you want, and so there's neutral, reverse, park, and drive. If I put it in reverse, doors lock automatically. You see a reverse screen up. I want to drive though, and put it in drive. Uh, so the drive up there, put my sunglasses on, mirrors look, yeah, pretty good. Why not? Let's lower that a bit. So the car makes a very low hum, and I noticed that when the a person the the guy that met me here pulled the car out. I think it has a speaker which produces that low hum at slow speeds. Now there's paddles on the back of the steering wheel here. The left one increases regeneration, so it's regeneration level three, and the right one reduces it. Interesting concept. So it's not like the paddles on the Chevrolet Volt or the Chevy Bolt where you push it and then engages engine braking. Uh, this one is just choosing, instead of like going into an L mode or an Eco mode, you just choose it based on your current driving conditions, which I think might be a very interesting approach to the whole deal. So I'm on the least amount of regeneration. And uh, to be honest, I really haven't thought about where I'm gonna drive. Let's drive past my place, why not? So yeah, that low sound is gone, I think. Uh, I need to... Steering wheel is quite high, it is telescopic, and you can put it up and down, pull it in and out. Uh, so, first impressions. I'm not actually sure, oh yeah, there it is. It shows your speedometer, it's interesting. Digitally, it has a, a needle. I was looking for a number. I'm so used to there being a number just displaying there. 
So the car is, it's gonna feel solid so far. I get quite a bit of uh, road noise, but this is a very beat up street. Ah, there's a brand, there's a second generation Chevy Volt. Some happy owners there. So I put the accelerator down there around that corner. Uh, this car has an 88 kilowatt electric motor. If you remember me talking to me, if you saw my Chevrolet Volt video, that one 150 kilowatt hour or 150 kilowatt. So there's no way I would have, ex I would expect this car to be as fast as that one. What I'm mostly going to be comparing this vehicle to is the Nissan Leaf, the Kia Soul EV. It'll be just closest. And that's pretty good. From zero, uh, when I was going around that corner, it didn't really want to kick up too much, but while driving, it did very well. I'm going to have to remember to use these uh, paddles to increase the generation. It is kind of, now there is a drive mode button, what does that do? Alright, that cycles between the regeneration and, and sport mode as well. So there's sport, whoa. All right, well, let's put it in, let's leave it in sport mode for a few moments. So sport mode makes the uh, accelerator pedal super twitchy. Whoa, and the wheels are coming out. So it's changed the power. Oh, and it's changed the, the dot, the display now too. On the outside, it's now showing me uh, a speed out reading, so going like 40 kilometers an hour. And the outside, it shows now power usage. It, I saw it go to like 90%. And I'm like, holy crap, am I going that fast? But no, it just it changed it. Uh, it's super twitchy. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. Oh, that, yeah, that's that's funny. It's, it's the car is just screaming its head off. Okay, so let's eco. So in eco, we put it in a level two regeneration. I increase that to level three. Oof. Okay, I'm on level three. Uh, I thought that car had stopped in front of me. Accelerator off. It slows the car down quite a bit. It's not as strong as some, but it's pretty good. So eco as well. Yes, there's still some good throttle response, but it gives you quite a bit of feel on the pedal. So let's check a few other things. Let's check wind noise. Uh, in this car, all four windows go all the way down. So. buffeting or any uh, un unexpected sounds. So I'm still in the maximum level of regen in eco mode. Uh, there's a battery temperature gauge on the right. I'm letting, yeah, that slows the car down significantly. There, there's no one behind, someone quite a ways behind me. So I'm gonna get up to say 60 kilometers an hour. Can I let go now? I'm at 50, 40, 30. So it's still, it's gradual. It's not like really slowing or you're going to slam the car down. I'm going to put it to level two. Let's try that again a bit here. I let go. On oh, level two, the car is way more free, free moving. 50, 40. Let's go to level one. At level one, you can barely feel it. And off. Yep, and when it's off the car, it actually, it feels like it's powering. It's actually still moving the car. Uh, something that I, I would kind of expect to feel from a combustion vehicle. I'm still in eco mode though. So let's see, let's, if I go down this, this hill with the accelerator off, it's, yeah, it's not generating any electricity here. The car is actually accelerating. So this is probably the first electric vehicle I've been in where even in in the free-flowing drive mode, 
it doesn't pull back anything. Uh, so that's something new, which I haven't come across yet. That's uh, that's an interesting approach to take. Um, so if I go, yeah, oh yeah, you can see it on there too. So in zero, in mode, there's zero kilowatts showing here. Um, if I go into level three now, yeah, you can see it's pulling a ton of power. Huh. And that sounds there now at slow speeds. You probably won't be able to hear it. All right, so this car, I think it's starting in the mid 30s. I would have to, you need to confirm that with your local Hyundai dealership. But this is Hyundai's first all electric vehicle. And I think a lot of people were expecting to come up with this vehicle sooner. Uh, this is 2017, uh, 28 kilowatt. You might think that that's a little bit risky, especially since a lot of the second generation vehicles are just about to come out or have come out with uh, significantly more battery storage. Or they've upgraded, like the BMW i3, you can get in like a 33 kilowatt hour um, version now. So, this car has an interesting spot to fit in right now. Uh, I'm not going to hide it. Hyundai has announced, according to my research, that for the 2018, this car is going to bump up from 200 kilometers to 320 kilometer range. I don't know what the actual battery uh, capacity increase will be, though, or what it's supposed to be. But that's significant. That puts it on par with what you'd expect kind of from a second generation electric vehicle. And I think that they knew that they had to do that uh, just to stay competitive. So it's kind of surprising me that this car is out here now in this configuration. But if you've read any of my blogs or watched some of my videos, you will understand though that I kind of feel that a lot of people don't need that huge battery storage. I think that enables like people in apartments to own an EV or a condo that doesn't have access to a power plug. But if you are one of the many people that owns your own place or, or at least you rent in a place and you have access to a power plug uh, and maybe this is a secondary, you have two vehicles, let's say. This vehicle it would probably, well, the range about around 200 kilometers is perfect. If I don't think most people are gonna be driving more than 200 kilometers on a regular day. And as like the hundreds of thousands of people that bought a Nissan Leaf, which only has, let's say, a usable range of 130 kilometers, like for the first generation, have found that that's well within what they absolutely need. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't let the, low, the lower battery storage or the lower range compared to what you're going to see come up be something to dissuade you from considering this vehicle. Uh, already just driving it around town I like this car quite a bit there's something about the form factor of a sedan and I think that's one of the enchanting things or one of the things I really like about the Chevrolet Bolt is that it's just a regular car or like it's a, it's a car it's not a hatchback and I've owned several hatchbacks before like before the electricity days so but I just like the way that a, a sedan or a vehicle with this configuration drives and feels. So what about the interior? The dash is a little bit, a little bit higher. Uh, the windows, though, like there's really good visibility. Um, the screens, like they don't look like these crazy high resolution, high tech screens, but they look, they're totally readable. They're usable. Um, it has an Infiniti sound system, this guy. There's 12 volt power plugs, like two there, one here. There's USB input. I don't know if this has a CarPlay or Android Auto. I haven't checked that out. Uh, there's some neat features, like right behind me in the center stack here, there's a heating vents for the rear passengers, which that's just nice to see. Uh, let's see, we're still in eco mode. And I'm on level two of regeneration. I'm not sure I like how this gauge changes based on the drive mode. I kind of wish I could just choose which one I want on there and maybe there's an option, but I'm doubting that. I'm thinking it probably is just tied with whatever they programmed it. Uh, the car is very stable. I'm gonna quickly take this on higher speeds and then we'll kind of drive it back but I'm not leaving anytime 
soon here. Put the regeneration on three with the paddle. All right. Okay, let's go to regeneration level one and drive mode. Let's put it in. This is normal. So there's no eco on right now. There's no sport. It's just kind of a blank display or like there's no highlight. So this just be regular driving. There's lane assist is on. There's an auto lock button here for your charging. Traction control, that's off. I'm gonna put it back on. I don't need traction control off. Uh, there's all kinds of yeah, sunglass holders, lights. It's just the stuff you would expect from a vehicle, like a newer vehicle like this. Oops. Huh. All right, so the car doesn't, huh. So I put the accelerator down by let go because it did lose some traction, but you could feel uh, the traction control or something was trying to modulate or trying to get traction there. Uh, I think these tires, they're definitely not that grippy. We've got the car, it's responsive and it feels, it feels pretty good. Oh. So let's let me talk about Hyundai for a moment in this video because it is possible that maybe someone from Hyundai Canada or US or wherever is watching this video. Unlikely, but it's possible. Uh, my Kia Soul EV video, I actually some of the data traffic came from uh, Kia.com, so someone there was looking at my video or several people. And let's say you are looking at this video. Thank you for releasing this car. The market needs more support and more choice. I really wish you you released this vehicle in an SUV or a crossover platform. No, and let's say an SUV, like a Santa Fe or something like that. You would people would be dying to buy that vehicle. And not to undersell like the the sedan market. It's it's popular. A lot of people buy it, but. I don't really understand why a manufacturer, like besides Tesla, hasn't cut thought, hey, you know, let's take a high, like a vehicle that usually consumes a lot of fuel or whatever, but sells a ton, and make it still really powerful, which an EV drivetrain can offer, but be practically free to drive, or run, and operate. So puzzle it's just kind of just a puzzling question and I wish Hyundai would do that Mitsubishi actually has a plug-in hybrid SUV uh, which they sell all across well you know Europe and in Asia and it sells great people love it and they refuse to bring it to North America and something entire inside me tells me that it's because they don't want to cannibalize their regular high high profit sales of SUVs and maybe that's the case with this vehicle. And I understand there's boardrooms and you have people that you're responsible and you have to make certain profits, but you have to realize as a big manufacturer, companies like Tesla and there's tons of other like little companies out there like Faraday Future and that they are coming up as the new kids, the new way of thinking about selling a vehicle, designing a vehicle, owning a vehicle. You need to move into that segment quick otherwise like you're gonna find yourself really out of time but I think had this vehicle being here shows that they at least have some commitment or there is some commitment there so okay here I am yeah, the car has good pep good power There's, yeah, like I was a big bus drove by and it would have been, the motor would have been quite loud. It barely heard it. There's some tire noise, a little bit of wind noise. Not much really. I feel like I need to raise this seat up a bit. I'm 
comfortable in the car. This this actually space looks quite nice. Uh, the seats are comfortable. They're firm but supportive. Oh, another thing I don't know if you've noticed the steering wheel. It's a D-shaped steering wheel, so it's flat on the bottom. It gives your legs a little bit more clearance. It's also kind of a throwback to a sporty or an aftermarket wheel. Um, well, that made me chuckle when I saw that, and uh, I like it. I, I think it's a. Uh, it's cool to see a manufacturer just kind of put that into one of their electric vehicles. You know, uh, heaven forbid that somebody actually say that their electric vehicle is sporty and fun. Uh, you know, instead everybody seems to want to sell it as... Well, actually, I'm not even sure how they want to market and sell it. And I guess, let's say I'm speaking to Hyundai again too. This car, the Ionic. This is the first time I have had targeted ads like through YouTube for an electric vehicle. A lot of times when I've been going, like you'll have like an ad for a Chevrolet, but it'll be for like one of their SUVs or their trucks or one of their gasoline cars or Ford or whatever. It's never shown me an electric vehicle. Now, like for a couple days anyways, when I was on the main YouTube page, it was like Ionic videos, ad like real ads and that was actually kind of made me reach out to uh, Victoria Hyundai because it was like, hey, this could be a manufacturer that actually wants to sell this car. And that kind of blew my mind because uh, like, I don't know about you, but have you seen an ad for like a, a good ad in recently for a Nissan Leaf or the Chevrolet Volt or the Chevrolet Bolt? Uh, now, mind you, I've seen some i3 ads on Twitter, a little video recently of the BMW i3 driving through uh, some university campus or something inside a library, which was cool and neat, but I'm not really sure what they're, they're going there. But I think the point is though, manufacturers don't really put a lot of time, especially in Canada, into trying to sell these vehicles. And there's could be all kinds of ways to, you could, the person, the skeptic in me would say it's because they need to sell these in markets where they need credits for the states. So if they're selling these in Canada, why would they advertise them? They don't, they don't need to sell them in Canada to get their credits. Uh, so why spend the time in advertising? That's possible. The other option is that maybe they just don't think the market's there and they don't want to spend the money. It's also possible. Another option is maybe they can't uh, get the batteries that they need to have mass production of these. Another option is maybe the dealerships don't want to sell them. Maybe the Hyundai is just, or maybe like everyone else is dying to sell these vehicles manufacturers, but the dealership is like, no, we don't want to. We don't make enough money on it. So those are all possible and probable situations. Um, I'll let you decide. I've talked about it and I'm still trying to think. But as mentioned, this is, it surprised me I saw an ad for this car. And if you hadn't driven an EV, I would imagine that you would be quite uh, pleased with this. It feels very good. Oh, drat. Uh, it's, you know, it's the single drive uh, tra like transmission, or it's just there's no transmission really, it's just it's direct drive, so you get that instant power, you have no gear change. It's not like a CVT, which is in most hybrids. Now, if I recall, there should be a park here somewhere, and I'm gonna pull into the park, and I'm gonna look at the manual, the owner manual, I'm gonna look at maintenance, that's something I'm doing now, it's my new card. Um, I kinda thought the park would be here by now, maybe I missed it. Oh, I'll find a place to park somewhere. Uh, no, okay, so let's go home. Ooh, ooh, all menus. Actually, the GPS was already there. Current, current location? Now it's coming up. I see it. So, what's nice is this car has a GPS. Uh, some manufacturers have, the GPS is really hard to get and they just say, use your phone. Um, oh, this isn't the park I was thinking of. I was thinking of at all. I was thinking of a different park. And this place is very busy, it looks like. Okay, well, I might be able to get to the other park from here. Although I 
I've seen a lot of no exit signs up here. <laughs> I'll find a place to pull over. Uh, very easy to drive. Super easy to drive. Let's turn left. I don't know if you hear that sound. That low. That's interesting. I, when I first was researching sound, like in electric vehicles, because the Leaf has a speaker, the Volt doesn't. The first gen didn't, anyways. I remember reading accounts of them trying to decide what type of noise to make, and how they had a choice between tons of different sounds. And I imagine Hyundai probably went through the same thing. Like, what kind of sound do you make that doesn't annoy people or doesn't annoy you? I'm gonna slow down. It's, where does it start? It's on now, it's about 25 kilometers. Gone. All right, well this is a nice neighborhood. I'm just gonna pull over here. Well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, then it's automatically off. Can I only put it in neutral? All right. Oh, good. Somebody broke the seal. Uh, all right, what kind of, what do you get in here? Wow, somebody really broke the seal. You got car multimedia system, ionic electric. Oh, that's French. On the front say, another multimedia, Andro Auto and Apple Play CarPlay connectivity guide. Okay, so that does exist in this car. Oh man. Ooh. That new manual smell. Uh, da -da. Come on, you need to have table of contents, right? Nope. All right. Oh, come on, maintenance. Huh. Maybe it doesn't have a maintenance section. I find that a bit interesting. I'm so used to all there, there's always being a guide for when you should be doing things to the car. And that's not in here. This is basically how to use the entertainment system. Oh, this does say car multimedia. Is there anything in here that isn't car multimedia system? This is the car quick reference guide. Huh. All right, well, maybe there just isn't, maybe this car doesn't, is, doesn't have that uh, maintenance manual in it, like how to use the car. I yeah, usually has basic stuff. So I'm just gonna assume that that's not in this car right now. Um, well, that's too bad. So I guess maintenance wise, this car should be, I'm gonna lower these windows and cook them. Actually here, let's turn, the, let's turn the air conditioning on. I want 17 degrees, that's what I want. But I want it to be quiet, okay? So uh, there should be very, almost no maintenance with this car. So be warned, depending on what market you buy this from, there's many different configurations. In Canada, I can't quite tell, or I haven't done enough research to know if all the Ionic electrics come with a hybrid heating system, hybrid heat pump system or not. Uh, that The heat pump system is an option. This car is the comfort package, so I'm pretty sure that would have it. Uh, but make sure if you're gonna buy the base model that it, well, just think about your requirements. Uh, doing some research online, they were showing that for the first five minutes or so that heating pump system in like we're talking minus 10 or colder temperatures used about four to five kilowatt hours of power for the first uh, five minutes then it went down to half a kilowatt hour which is nothing so people were kind of just surprised that it had that huge crunch of energy and then it really leveled off 
uh, doesn't surprise me too much. But if you can, if you didn't have that, if you had just the regular like heating element one, you're it's going to be consuming a ton of power for moderate climates like Victoria or Vancouver Island, especially the southern tip of the island. Uh, it wouldn't really matter that much. But if you're in a colder climate situation, think about the if getting the heat pump. So okay, so once again, like this whole drive system is kind of freaking me out a bit, but I like it. Like as a technology guy, I like it. So I'm gonna drive. So I think we're good to head back. I just have to figure out how to, you know, get back there. Easy. Uh, easy that I have a GPS without having to hook my phone up. Turn signal's a nice sound. I've still kind of blown my mind that uh, when you're not, like when you have the uh, regenerative at zero, like right now, the car is actually, it won't pull out anything, like energy back, it's just, it's going. Yeah, that's just really surprising to me that that is the way it is. Unheard of thing. That speaker too, man, it's pretty loud. I'm gonna be reacting much more. I'm used to the car now. Uh, what am I gonna say? You know, how am I gonna review this? How do I place it? By the way, it's just this car is just sipping energy. Hey, there's a leaf in front of us. So, Hyundai is entering this obviously a little bit late to the game. The first. Uh, Nissan Leaf came out, well, I think it was late 2010, kind of 2011 is how most people think it starts. So we're six years ahead of that. Uh, they have, Hyundai, I would imagine, had a lot of time to study their competition and kind of figure out what they wanted to do. Did they do a good job? Yes. They did a good job. This car's nice. Uh, it's... If you wanted to put five people in this car, it's going to be a tight fit. Um, it's, it's not a large car. But it definitely is good. Okay, I'm going to put the regeneration up. Level 3. Yeah, level 3 is strong. It's not... You now, will it stop the car? Car still moving, car still moving, car still moving. It's not going to stop the car. So the regen does not stop the car. It's not that heavy. But it's it's strong strong enough anyways to slow you down so now the leaf the Nissan leaf comes in a 30 kilowatt hour configuration now and the new leaf comes out next year this is 28 kilowatt hour uh, the Kia Soul EV now I think is something like 30 like I mentioned the I th BMW i3 is 33 I'm not gonna compare the i3 to this car the i3 is a more direct comparison well I don't know I'm not gonna compare it to this car I think the closest comparison is the Kia Soul EV and the Nissan Leaf. Obviously the Ford Focus Electric as well and the Volkswagen E-Golf. I haven't driven those two vehicles. I guess there's also the Fiat 500e. I also haven't driven that. Hoping to drive one of those soon. So, the Leaf, the Soul, or this. I'm pretty sure with 30 kilowatt hours in the Leaf, it still only advertises about 186 kilometers of range. Um, is it 30 or 28? I don't know any. So, this is advertising more. And the way that I feel that this car drives and just how it's set up, I would, be I would believe this car gets 200 kilometers, like, easily. Uh, I'd have no concern that it wouldn't be, that it would get, like, much less than that. So... Hyundai, sorry, Hyundai has done something interesting with this vehicle. They've been able to squeeze out a lot more. 
Now, something when I bought my first Leaf was, it advertised it as 24 kilowatt hour of storage. And I thought, okay, great. You know, if I average 6.4 kilometers per kilowatt hour, I can get this, but no. I only had it access to about 20 of those kilowatt hours. The rest of it uh, was left to just save the battery just because it, it doesn't want to get the battery down to like absolute zero. So it's possible Hyundai has, let's say, let's just say they maybe they put a 32 kilowatt hour battery in this car and they let you use a real 28 kilowatt hour. Then that would explain the the storage or maybe they have a much, they, they let the battery go a lot lower in terms of threshold. Uh, on that point, I don't know what the warranty is. I kind of was hoping the manual would uh, shed some light on there, but they don't have that here. Most manufacturers are putting the eight-year warranty in all the electronic bits uh, or close to that. I would imagine that this is the same. I can't see them really doing that. So, I like the Chevrolet Volt more than this car. I just do. You're not going to be able to buy a Volt, though. I'm telling you right now, inventory is not there, uh, especially in Canada. Do I like this car more than the Leaf? That's a much harder thing to answer. I think I like the range more because I'm, I'm I'm confident this will get more than the brand new Leaf, like not the second generation, the brand new one. And remember this car is going to be getting a battery upgrade for the 2018 from what I've heard. So geez, I don't know. I think if I was looking for a brand new car, electric. I like this more than the Kia Soul EV. That's just straight up, I think this is a more compelling package. I just like the, I like the vehicle more. Um, do I like it more than the later Leafs though? There's something enchanting about the Leaf, about the way that everything comes together. It's a really nice card. It's just a really nice car all around. There's nothing I can think of that this car takes away. I'm just talking myself through this right now. Yeah, let's put full regen. Yeah, no, this is a great car. It's very quiet. It's also, okay, so this let's bring this brings us down to the next point about this car. This car does not scream. I mean, well, it has a big electric on the back and stuff, but it doesn't scream like by the funky styling of the Leaf or the i3 or anything that I'm an electric vehicle. Uh, I'm looking in a mirror right now and it kind of looks like what I'd expect from Hyundai's product lineup or, or Honda or Kia, any of those. It's, it's not the shouty thing. Uh, like, look at me, I'm I'm saving the environment. And I kind of like that shouty, look at me kind of thing. But I'm, I know lots of people don't. Uh, this car, it's like the charger is like where the gas tank or gas filler would be. Uh, it has DC fast charging. Uh, there's... Yeah. Drive mode settings. Oh, you can change what type of stuff coast generate. You can customize how each one of those drive modes reacts. Uh, I don't think you could choose. You could choose a maximum speed limit in eco. Ha! Ah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. All right, so I don't think you can figure how it looks like, but you can configure each one of those drive modes. That's awesome. I'm still on maximum regeneration here. Our speaker's going. Hmm. Yeah, this car feels good. So 
smooth. Showing me a nearby station, 510 meters. Can I click on that? Yes, I can. Damn right, I can. Here's all charge stations, Saanich Road, Nedco, never heard of them. District Saanich, Mayfair Center. Yeah, that looks pretty accurate, actually. Awesome. Nice to have that. <laughs> that feels good. Composed. Let's use that word, composed. That's how it feels. I think you, no. I, if you have an EV right now, like an older Leaf, uh, which you know, or you know someone, they would like this car, 100%. I think anybody that's in into kind of the standard EV would probably fall in love with this car. It's just, it's doing everything right. The thing it's missing though, it's missing that like, that one big push, which would push like the Chevrolet Bolt, like the massive battery storage, the 60 kilowatt, and like the absolutely nutty acceleration. Like this one is making me smile. Almost every EV I've been in has made me smile with how it drives. But the Bolt was just stupid. And I really appreciated that, um, you know, like going around a corner there, you could hear the wheels. It was spinning, and there's there are there's there's going to be some kind of unrefinedness, I suppose. And of course, this car shares the platform with a hybrid and with a plug-in hybrid. And so this car, <coughs> excuse me, wasn't designed to be just a, a full EV. Uh, that can be said with a lot of the other vehicles on the market. Uh, they're usually sharing a platform. And I'm almost at the dealership to drop the car off. Ugh. Yeah. I think this car is going to sell like mad. This car, I could see appealing to so many people. Um, we're at 52 percent energy and, and yeah that's pretty good it's yeah it is a car it feels like a car it has great power it's comfortable it's quiet practically like free to drive oh god and you know what like, we're coming up to a smart car this car just destroys something like that in terms of efficiency. Now if I go into sport mode here, let's turn regeneration all the way off. Now let's leave it on one. Um, this car, you don't have to make a sacrifice like you have to do in that smart car. Uh, the smart car, you have to sacrifice size, acceleration, all that stuff. Uh, this car, you don't. Uh, you have a really nice car, it's comfortable, it's tons of, you can put five people in it, you can put a bunch of storage, uh, and the efficiency is just insane. And I was skeptical that this car would get the 200 kilometers. Uh, I kind of thought that they were really pushing it with a 28 kilowatt hour battery, because I assumed that they were, you'd only have 24, let's say, accessible. But after driving it and seeing that we're now at 51%, and I believe it fully. Uh, yeah, this car would get that. Not a problem. And that's great. Like this car probably has to average something like seven or more kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is amazing that they could come up with that type of efficiency. Uh, a lot of other EVs can only dream of that.
All right, I'm gonna put this right here. There's a silver ionic, ionic over there as well. Park. Parking brake. Uh, let's turn this off, 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 off. All right, so that is the 2017 Hyundai Ionic electric, full electric vehicle. I'm obviously gonna write a blog about this and I usually find in my blog I have time to reflect and think about the vehicle a little bit more. I'm just, right now my mind's just going crazy trying to understand. But it's a great car, it's excellent. Um, I only mentioned like once I got my first electric vehicle I decided I'd never buy another gasoline only vehicle again and uh, that put out brands like Hyundai that was just they weren't part of the equation anymore uh, but they're back in the game now if I had to replace my Nissan Leaf right now like if the Leaf was stolen or written off or something like that this would be high on the list it would definitely be something it would like it would be top contender and the contenders would be right now would be this the Chevrolet Bolt I don't think I'd buy a, a Leaf right now like I would I would wait for the second generation Leaf this is better than the first generation Leafs you can get right now I mean, there I said it it's better than the Leafs right now uh, I can't talk about the second generation Leaf but yeah no, this is a really nice car so Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks again to uh, Victoria Hyundai. I'll see if I could put like a picture if I figure it up, or maybe I'll put a link if I could figure out how to point to something and have a link here. Maybe I'll put do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you Hyundai Canada for creating this vehicle, bringing it to Canada, marketing it. That is huge. And uh, I guess I should, I should finish by if you are considering an electric vehicle. Or if you're thinking about buying this one, or if you bought it, please comment. Let me know what you think of the vehicle or the videos that I'm making or any questions that you might have. Uh, I do respond. And we could have some good conversations, and those conversations just help more people uh, to decide to maybe change the way they, uh, they move themselves around. So thanks again, and uh, look for some videos in the future. Bye.